Hello everyone. This is part 3 of geometric progressions. Please refer to previous parts of the tutorial before proceeding. In this session, we will learn how to find sum of n terms of geometric progression and how to find sum of infinite terms of geometric progression. We will also solve one example question based on this concept. Let us see how to find out sum of n terms of geometric progression. In order to find out that, let us write general representation of geometric progression which is A which indicates the first term AR where R is common ratio and multiplied with first term AR square, AR cube and so on AR to the power of n minus 1. Here AR to the power of n minus 1 indicates nth term, right? which we have discussed in our earlier session. Here A is first term, R is common ratio which we can derive by dividing second term with first term that is AR divided by A which is R that is the common ratio. Now we want to find out sum of these terms. So sum which we will represent with the letter S is equals to add all these terms. So it will be A plus AR plus AR square plus AR cube and so on nth term that is AR to the power of n minus 1. So let us name this as equation 1. As we are considering for n terms, let us name it as Sn. Now, in order to find out Sn value, let us multiply equation 1 with R, that is common ratio. That is multiplying 1 with R, which is common ratio. So, the resulting series is R into Sn is equals to A multiplied with R, which is AR plus AR into R, AR square plus AR cube and so on, AR to the power of N minus 1, that is N minus second term plus nth term, that is AR to the power of N minus 1 is multiplied with R. So, the resulting term is going to be AR to the power of N. Let us name this as so now in order to obtain sum of n terms, let us subtract 2 from 1 that is 1 minus 2. So on the left hand side it will be Sn minus R into Sn is equals to if you observe on the right hand side we have common terms so which we can cancel it out right. So here AR, AR square, AR cube ar to the power of n minus 1. So, all these terms we can cancel it out. So, the resulting terms are in equation 1 we have one term which is a and in between two equations we have minus sign. So, let us write minus and in equation 2 we have another term which is ar to the power of n. So, let us write that ar to the power of n. Now, if you take sn as common over here it will be 1 minus r and on the right hand side by taking a as common factor it will be 1 minus r to the power of n. Therefore, sum of n terms is given by Sn is equals to a into 1 minus r to the power of n divided by 1 minus r. If you look into this formula, we can say that r value we are subtracting from 1 that indicates that r is less than 1. If r is greater than 1, that is Sn is equals to, just change the order of r and 1, that is a into r to the power of n minus 1 divided by r minus 1, this is r greater than 1. You might be thinking that this is a very lengthy procedure to find out sum of n terms. But this is very much important in order to understand understand and solve questions based on these formulas. Let us extend sum of n terms to infinite terms which means that we are considering 
up to infinite terms. So let us consider the general representation of geometric progression that is a, a r, a r square and so on, a r to the power of n minus 1 and so on up to infinity. Here as you know that here a is first term and r is common ratio. Now we want to find out sum of infinite terms. So which is s infinity is equals to a plus a r plus a r square and so on a r to the power of n minus 1 and so on infinity. In order to obtain sum of infinite terms let us consider sum of finite terms that is sum of n terms and in that will extend up to infinity that is s n is equals to a into 1 minus r to the power of n divided by 1 minus r. As you know that this formula is applicable when r is less than 1. Let us assume that n is approaching to infinity that is number of terms are extending up to infinity. At the time what happens to r to the power of n? As n value approaches to infinity, this value will be negligible. So, we can derive s infinity that is replacing n value with infinity from the formula as a divided by 1 minus r. As we are considering this value is negligible, so sum of infinite terms will become a divided by 1 minus r when r is less than 1. So this formula is useful to calculate when the terms are extending up to infinity. You might be thinking how to use these formulas. Don't worry, in next session we will solve some questions based on these formulas. In next session we will discuss questions based on sum of finite and infinite terms. Please subscribe to our channel for latest updates. Please refer to the following link to get complete videos of the channel. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.